Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Minecraft and wherever it's we're in the Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack which I'm kind of drowning in but we'll see how we get on with it. So yes what have we been doing since last time? Well I, I went in with the intent of doing some automation because in the last uh, run you'll remember that I set up a system up here where, where we had some chests where automatically having the bits and pieces put into them for making various types of, um, of rune and for doing the various mana soakings. So in an attempt to make that a little bit more automated and a little bit nicer we now have a system here where we've got this um, ME interface is now trying to make, is, is or now believes it can make, um, mana infused string, mana powder, mana diamonds and mana pearls. And each one of these, as you can see, it will tell you what it creates and how it does it. So it creates a mana pearl with an ender pearl. And it creates, so it, as far as it, as far as this ME interface is concerned, it creates a mana pearl by bringing in an ender pearl and outputting it where the way the arrow points. So this way, which puts it into this machine here, which is an automatic an automatic precision dropper which has its own inventory and then when things are put in here it will automatically drop them on the, out the front of it now in this case it'll drop them straight into this mana pool which will soak them in mana and then the automatic picker upper thing here the the ranged collector can then grab the thing when it's been mana soaked and in here i've put in a um, specifics of what it's allowed to pick up it doesn't need to pick up terra steel anymore so it can pick up those four things we're talking about and from there it, oh yeah, there's a nut, then underneath it, there's a, um, behind the bit, behind this, break that, oh, it broke the whole thing, that was not what I wanted to do, let's pick all of this back up again and repair it, because otherwise, it'll be, things will be sad, okay, so we have an ME import bus on the bottom of here, like that, and that hooks up in, onto this cable automatically, the, the import bus, we then need to, do we need to do anything else with this, I can't, I don't think so, because there's nothing else in my inventory, I think that will then just happily pull anything out of here back into the system, but we'll give it a test and find out, so let's try and, Repair, what, repair all the damage I did. Um, one of the other things I've made recently is these cable facades that you can put on the cables like this to, um, to sort of hide them away and make it look a bit less ugly and make it look like these things are actually supported. So if I come over here and I say I want some um, mana pearls, uh, flux, mana, mana pearls, uh, why do we not have any ender pearls? Let, let's, let's start with something else then. Let's start with diamonds because we've probably got, yeah, we've got lots of diamonds. We've got 26 mana diamonds, but sure, we'll take those out. Now I've got the craft option in here. So I can say I want to make 10 mana pearls. And if we go over here, um, no, we say want to make 10 mana pearls, then we need to say yes, do so. Then if we go over here, you see they all drop out of there. And then they get picked up by this machine. Now I accidentally managed to pick up six of them because I stepped in the mana pool. So if we come back over here and look, we'll see that we're still trying to make six of them. So what 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 is, what is actually happening is that these are all being soaked in mana there. That turns them into mana diamonds and then this thing picks them up. So now we have seven mana diamonds, eight mana diamonds, nine, ten. There we go. They've all made their way back into the system now. So we've got the ten mana diamonds in the system and I can put these 26 back in again. So we've got a nice supply of those. That's working quite nicely. In fact, that's working perfectly. The only slight problem is that I put in this um, mana spreader to take mana out of this pool to go over there, and I shall explain why in a moment. Um, and the reason I'm taking it out of this pool is because this is the one that's being measured by this system in order to decide where the mana, in order to decide whether the mana collection system should run. <clears throat> so I put in, an, an, in this additional mana spreader here to pull out of that one because these were over full. And this one was empty, so I wanted to, yeah, to, to, to rebalance a little bit. Um, I'll probably not leave that in for very long, though. So, the next thing I did was, right, that, that's, that's great. That was exactly how I was expecting it to work. It just went together perfectly. It did exactly what I wanted. So I thought, okay, great, I'm on a, on a roll. Let's go over and start doing the same sort of thing with the, um, with the runic altar. So, we've got all the rune recipes. Uh, let's look in here first. So I've got all the rune recipes across here, and I went off and I, I, read, I redid them correctly in this time to have the, um, the living rock that's required by it and all of the other stuff that goes into them. So, for example, this, this rune of fire requires living rock, gunpowder, mana steel, nether wart, mana powder, blaze powder, basalt. Fine, I've loaded all that into the, into the um, pattern. So if I request a rune of fire, this thing will spit all of those things out into here, into the automatic precision dropper, which drops them onto the uh, the runic altar, which gets mana from this um, pool here, uh, given to it by this mana spreader. And the reason I've done it like this, rather than using that mana spreader to fire directly at the altar, is because this, this is so much of a distance here that the, um, the mana spreaders are slower the greater the distance is. So I wanted to have that feeding to... 
um, an intermediary and then have this one feed straight into there so it transfers it as quickly as possible. Um, so this is this is great. If I come over here now and we have a look at um, runes, for example, I would like to make I would like to see what rune, what runes do we have available. So I have made most of them at this point. Um, so let's 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 take out that rune of water and we'll make another rune of water because this is a thing we can do. So you see here, there's all of the ingredients that are required for it. Those are the, those are the things from the um, from from the pr pattern that I put in there. I can hit start on this and then come over here. You see all of those things are now pouring out out of the dropper onto this um, onto the onto the, onto the uh, runic altar. And now they're starting to do the rotating thing. You can see the, um, the the pie chart filling up with the amount of mana it's absorbed. That's working nicely. So that's great. The problem is once it gets to this point, you do need someone to come over and go boop like that in order to turn it into the um, in into the room. Now, there's also a couple of other problems, and the reason it hasn't been picked up and put back into the system automatically. Um, I shall do that. I shall put these back in here. There we go. Uh, just to clear the recipe out. So when I, I started building this thing up, and I thought, okay, this is great. I've, I've found, I know how to do this. You drop things out. Um, okay, I'm going to have to boop it manually with the wand for now, but I'll, I'll look into an auto booper in a bit. That was that, that, that I was okay with. The problem arises. So th there we go. These have gone back into the system, and, all the, and there's no crafting jobs active now. So the problem is, if we look at, for example, the rune of autumn... Um, all right, let's take that out. If we look at the rune of autumn, that requires a rune of air and a rune of fire in order to make it. So if I use the same system and I have an automatic pickup thing on it, then when as soon as these drop out, it, it, it will pick up the rune of air and the rune of fire because those are things it thinks of as being completed. So I can't use the same runic altar to make these to make the, the runes of seasons as i do to make the runes of elements because the runes of seasons require the runes of, of the runes of elements to make them so they'll be picked up now so my thought was okay that's a bit of a pain but maybe instead of that i can have a second runic altar that makes the runes of the seasons so let's have a look at let's see how that goes so there's a rune of autumn here let's actually we, we will craft this because we've got we've got everything we need so now they all appear on there they go into the altar as as you expect the altar then picks up the manor Again, as you'd expect, this part is, is working nicely. I have um, no problems with this. This bit is going, going perfectly. And so, okay, that's done. I can now boop it like that. But now, as you'll have noticed, it's dropped all three runes out of it. Um, that is problematic. Um, because, okay, I could have a picker-upper thing um, that will automatically grab the rune of summer, or rune of, or rune of whatever month it was that, that required it. But unfortunately, it's also dropped the um, the runes, the, the other runes that we being used before, and I can't pick those. There is no way to get it to pick those up without having it pick them up initially in the um, in the recipe. Now it has also apparently eaten my rune of um, whatever whatever month, whatever season that was. So I'm going to need to um, grab that manually out of the table as well. So that's another problem with this thing. So basically, the problem comes down to Minecraft, unlike certain games that I'm a little bit more fond of doesn't have a system of inputs and outputs for well everything uh, some of the machines do and those work nicely you can automate those you can pipe things together and with those and and, and things just work <clears throat> but a lot of things you can't it seems you can't hook up a system to this that will say put in the inputs well you can put in the inputs with this but you can't take out the outputs you can only take out things that are here and things that are here could be inputs, it could be outputs. And now, yes, you can, on these things, you can, on these pick up a, um, whatever they're called, ranged collectors, you can give them a whitelist, say only pick up these things. But you can't say to not pick these things up until the thing has finished, which is, so that's, this is going to be problematic. It did just occur to me that because it pings all of the runes off it, if I put it on a very tall tower, maybe the runes would fall off all the way to the bottom and then I could have a ranged collector at the bottom. But that seems a bit, naff and also this did pick up one of those runes when it made it so i'm not sure i entirely trust it to drop them off properly two of them fell off onto the floor one stayed on top of it and got turned in it tried to turn it into something else so this this is problematic and i'm not quite sure how to get around this problem and i i was having a bit of a grump and a bit of a sense of humor failure in the last stream about it because basically things just don't work nicely in Minecraft and I believe this is basically because there are so many different mods there is um, and there isn't a sort of a, a there hasn't been a standardized way of doing everything so 
what what we do have is some systems like this one yeah like this pulverizer where you can you can go into the uh, configuration here and you can say okay i want input on this side i want output on that side and that works that that this this i'm, I'm very happy with this is this is the best system i found because it has a standard minecraft inventory that you can put things into you can take them out and when you automate it you can say that this input comes from in this case top and right this output goes to left and back and this output goes out the bottom fine that's that's really good i like that but then you have other systems like this one um where you can choose yeah this one just isn't as nice because you've got the various different places and you can go and define each of these individually um and you, yeah this, this is it's, it's okay this works but it's a lot less nice than the other system then instead as well as that you've then got the systems like the, the basically all of the magic systems as far as i can tell which is probably my my fault for, bit for saying i'll do the wizardy stuff but i didn't know this at the time where you've got well there isn't there isn't an inventory on any of these things you can't go along you can't go along to a runic altar and right click on it and have an inventory appear that shows you this is what's on the input side this is what's on the output side and put things in and take them out as you want and so there isn't also isn't a way to say take things in from this side and put them out on that side and I believe, I think we tried this, you can't put a hopper on the bottom, which is the vanilla Minecraft way of taking things out of things. So, basically, these things are extremely resistant to automation, which is quite annoying. Um, and I'm, I'm not very impressed with this as a, uh, as a system. So yeah, this is this is this is why I was having a bit of a, a sense of humour failure on the last stream, and things things just weren't going as I as I wanted them to. It just it just wasn't working nicely. I was able to use the same system as I used for the mana steel over there. This this does work. Over here, we have this. This is for making terra steel in a more automated way. And so this is again the same sort of thing as before. It's an ME interface with a pattern in it that says, in order to make a terra steel ingot, you drop, uh, you, you you need to output a mana diamond, a mana steel ingot, and a mana pearl. Those go into a dropper, which drops them all onto here. This picks them up in a sort of vaguely magical way. And then we've got a ranged collector here that will that is whitelisting terra steel. So that does work if I come over here again and we say we would like some terra steel we've got 36 of them already so we'll just make and we'll just make another one because why not we'll make, um, I can say next and I can and then sometimes it breaks as well when you try and make something so we say I want one of those next please okay it's gonna work good so I've got I've got all of the stuff available so it's not gonna need to mana soak anything so I can just say start here and then over here we'll see those things drop out onto here Magic happens, and because I put these sparks on 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 there, it quite quickly, in fact, that was that was quicker than I expected it to be. It's pulled an enormous quantity of mana out of the pools over here, uh, all the ones with the sparks on, and fed it into this machine here, which has then been able to use that mana to turn all those ingredients into a block of terra steel, which then gets picked up automatically by this thing, and that that works. I'm happy again, happy with that. That one didn't cause me any rages, and it yeah, it's done what done what I wanted. So let's put these back in here before somebody wonders where they've all gone. So yes, that was part. I mean, there was some partial success in there. This this system for making the mana soaking worked absolutely fine. This one for making the terra steel absolutely fine. The um, this one not so much because of the um, the the conflict in inputs and outputs. So that's been frustrating. I did a bit of extra sort of design work over here. So this over here is intent is eventually going to be a more effective mana collection system where we're going to have a row of four uh, ender flames behind each of these um, uh, mana spreaders, which will be feeding straight into these pools, which I can then link up possibly with um, mana go karts. I mean mine carts, or possibly with uh, sparks in order to produce the mana a bit more quickly. Because the system at the moment isn't isn't really fast enough. We've got all of these ender flames which are being fed should be being fed by this system oh but we've got enough there's enough mana in here now so we're not using this one very much um and then we've got these these two here being fed one being fed by the xp et flower over there which is why my uh, level is probably going down a bit and then this this one underneath being fed by these two thermal lilies which are the ones that turn lava into mana so the system is working, but it's not really producing mana as quickly as we would like. It's not being distributed quite as evenly as we would like. Let's see if I can do that. Is that working? Yes. 
probably is. So now we've got, I've got this attempting to transfer the mana into here because this is the one that's getting used up by everything else, so it's a bit unbalanced. Um, yeah, so that's most of what I got up to, I think. About the only other thing I've got to talk, I've got to mention, is that I made a mana blaster, which is supposed to be a way of putting mana into uh, into places by by hand. So you're supposed to be able to go around, and I don't know whether you can fill up mana pools. Doesn't look like it. I could probably use it on the altar. Oop. <laughs> Not like that though. Maybe from further away. Not sure. Um, it's, but the amount of recoil you get is supposed to be proportional to how much mana it's actually transferred. So I thought, okay, I've got this clay flower thing over here that's supposed to turn clay into into in, sorry sand into clay. Maybe if I shoot it with the mana gun, it'll it'll do something. But it still isn't doing anything. I've tried putting clay around it, in, uh, sorry, sand around it in all kinds of different places. You can't put it underneath it. It turns out it needs to be on dirt. So I assume it's this that's supposed to work. But I don't know. It's not working. It, it, it doesn't seem to be working, I, and I don't know why not. What if I throw this at it? Will it pull mana out of it? No. I don't. So yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I understand that. Maybe I should set one of these mana spreaders to zap it, and we'll see, we'd see what happens. But it's probably too far away. So that didn't work. So other people. So Mike has made a nuclear power plant, which is supposed to be the um, uh, the fix for all of our power power woes. I don't want to just randomly flick the switch in case the whole thing blows up because I don't really know how the system works. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of a concern. Um, because he's made it fairly close to my tower and you never know, it might, we might have our own little sort of um, Fukushima or Chernobyl incident down here. But maybe we should just trust that Mike knows what he's doing. <clears throat> There's lots of sort of... I'd suggest you go back and watch... I don't know. I'd say watch the stream for it, but there's... A lot of it is just all hidden away now, and there's lots of intricacies that have gone into it, and I don't know enough about it to really um, really to say much about it. Tristan has, as usual, been going around just generally helping people. Um, he's also made himself a vibranium pickaxe, which is very Marvel, um, which means he can apparently mine absolutely anything with it. Um, he's also made some new metals as well. So, yeah, well done there. Al tried to do some mining, but it was getting very, very laggy. This may have been because Tristan was off doing mining in the end at the same... No, not in the end, in the in the nether at the same time, I wouldn't like to say. But he was having trouble with it, and so I think he gave up and was planning to do some between streams instead. Um, because he wants to build up... So that our uh, computer system at the moment, we're running out of... Uh, we've got this system over here, which may, does the actual building of things from things uh, for 3x3 three three crafting. So if I look in here, for example, we've got a load of patterns in here that allows it that allows the system to make stuff as long as it only takes a 3x3 three three construction interface uh, and just make it on the fly without needing any sort of clever, well, anything at all. But it uses, and it uses these molecular assemblers in order to do so. So Al is apparently going to make a neater version of this that looks like a Christmas tree and allows us to have a lot more molecular assemblers in there. He had a quick look at his bees, but apparently has run out of queens and princesses, so he's now has some republican bees, which is um, not what you want because it means they're not doing any work. Um, he's made some ender tanks apparently, I don't know what he's using those for, but he has. He's made an ender chest and an ender pouch for, um, okay, so if we look up here, we'll probably find that, yes, there we go, there's an ender chest. Um, so that means whenever anyone puts anything in their ender pouch, it just teleports to here, gets automatically unloaded into in, in, into here. So, ooh, these should all be in the tower, I think. Let's, let's take those back. Um, and, uh, it should be in, in the storage system somewhere, but not there. Maybe this is where it goes in the storage system, who knows. Those should... Uh, no, they're funny, funny things. Oh wait, no, these sh no these should be in here because there isn't anywhere else that uh, in in the storage system to store them yet. I should probably make some drawers for those. That's a thing to do in the future. Um, and he made a he made a magic block that apparently fills him up with torches as long as he's nearby. So yay, well done there. Um, Pete hasn't told us what he's done, so I'm afraid I don't know what he's done. But he might be. He, there's a fairly high chance that he's been carrying on with the um, the mystical agriculture. Is that the one? What it's called? The one where, the, the one over here where you make all kinds of nonsense out of um, other kinds of nonsense. So you take you you basically make up all kinds of um, essences, and then you can combine those into things. And I've been using a bit of that to make some of the pumpkins and the wheat I've been needing for uh, a lot of the a lot of the rune making. So he's probably expanded this this field over here, but I honestly couldn't tell you what he's done. So yes, what 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 next? Well. As I said, I do need to make, I do need to put some more storage um, space up in the up in the tower because at the moment it's not really part of the storage system. All we've got, I can chuck things in using the, I can chuck things in using the um, the interface over here, which is great and gets gets things out of my inventory and means I can store them somewhere. But as you saw downstairs, they just go into a storage crate, which isn't ideal. 
So may, I think one of the things I need to do is build a load of drawers and draw controllers and then start having all of these petals and all of the um, all of the rune types and maybe other magical stuff like the, the mana soaked things. All those being stored up here as well. I've apparently broken the ceiling here. I, rem I think I remember doing that. I just got a bit carried away with chopping through but I've lost the piece of chalk so I can't fix it. Um, yeah, so all of this should ideally be on the, the main storage system so it can be used from anywhere. Um, let's have the emergency hamburger. Nom 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 nom. Um, yeah, so that, that's something I do want to do, would like to do at some point. Um, and I'd like to automate the flower growing as well because I think that'd be quite nice to do. That seems to be about all I have left on my to-do list at the moment. So then after that I shall be going in and looking at the quest lines. Um, we have... White Magic 2. So I've got to the end of this one. So I guess I need to... Oh, I need, oh yes, I did. Oh, here's, that's another thing I made. I made a Starlight Crafting Altar, which is an upgraded version of the... Um, not appearing in this film. Um, what was it called? This thing, the Luminous Crafting Table. So I put this down upstairs. In Tried to put it in place of the Luminous Crafting Table. It turned out it was too big, so I put it next to it. And it now turns out that you, you need to, you can't just have this. This is a multi-block structure. You need to build a special type of altar to go around it. So I'm hope, sort of hoping that the quests are going to tell me about that. Let's have a look. Right, so you make the Starlight Crafting Altar. Then Ah, here we go. Then it tells you about it needing a platform. And you have to look in the tome to find out how to do it. Okay, so... Yeah, this is a thing that I can probably do. I need to get these bits and pieces together and then hopefully I'll be able to then make make the correct type of altar to put it on. This area, this altar up here might get a little bit bigger um, because it's going to have to have this and all its surrounding nonsense around it. Um, and we'll see how that goes. I've also, uh, Mike started making this massive tower of, um, what's, what's this stuff called? Uh, rock crystal ore, uh, which can be turned into rock crystals, possibly by hitting it with a hammer but um, or, or with, a, with an axe, but I'm not quite sure. I don't really want to, to find out the hard way um, and waste a load of it. But also it was pointed out to me that there are various different types of crystals. So I went in here and I sorted out all the ones that have got at least a, si a purity of 70 um, or a size of 300. That one's somewhere in between. It's, it's good on both of those, but not quite good enough. So I seem to have kept that one anyway. Um, so these are all quite big and or I, I, either big or pure, or in some cases both, which is nice. Like this one, this one's a really good one. Um, I don't know what really good means in this context. We shall find out later. Um, but at the moment, I'm, keep, I'm trying to keep the ones that are good because I think I'm going to need them. So, yes, next time, probably building up the Starlight Crafting Altar properly. Um, probably not putting it quite here. I guess it'll go... Maybe over here somewhere. We shall see. Um, but that's generally going, that's a, a, a general expansion of these these sort of magical things, and we'll see see where we go from there. Maybe I'll look at dark magic again. Maybe I won't. Well, I, I I I don't really know. I'm just sort of making it up as I go along, as you can probably tell. Maybe I'll finally get an automatic uh, flower growing thing as well. We shall see. So thank you for watching. I shall be streaming this on Monday. Um, as, and we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Um, there'll also be the Factorio stream on Wednesday, so that's a good one to come along to if you want to see, see me uh, getting quite close to but still struggling to finish space exploration. We've got these summary videos at the weekend and um, often Minecraft, tut sorry, no, Factorio tutorials on Fridays. And sometimes there are uh, GTA videos on Thursdays, but they take ages to make and life is very, very full. So I don't seem to be making any of those at the moment. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next week and um, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Bye-bye.